Linda Barch is here from the Bruce Company. Looking pretty in pink. Isn't it though? Yes and no. There's one other little element hiding in these beautiful tropical plants and he's about to show his face right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. Isn't this cute? We've got some really cool pots at the store right now and this this is one of the smaller ones but I mean I'm sure this would prompt somebody naming them but I've got some um, bromeliads and some air plants and this particular one down here that's with very silvery foliage that actually is more um, xeric or, or dry loving so you it's not one that you uh, have to have to syringe or spray every day. Okay. It really does not require much care at all. So just that's, some that's pretty things. Perfect plan for that pot. And gardening. Mm -hmm. It is that time of the year. So we have that junior gardening session starting on this Saturday, and it's five dollars per session. You can check it out online, and they're going to be germinating some seeds this uh, coming right. Saturday. Getting to be that time. I yes, guess. it is. Let's go to the calls. We'll start with Sandy in Waterloo. Hi, Sandy. Hi. 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 What's your question? Yeah, I was wondering when and if it's safe to plant the bulbs for the glads. Okay, now these are glads that I would suggest, I assume that you're going to be planting this indoors? Or you no, can, outdoors. Right, right, the soil is, is still too cold for that then. Okay, so, so when, it, when do you start that then? Well, it's, sort of, it's very weather dependent. I think it's been quite warm while I was gone, so um, I guess if you're on sandy soils, that will warm up faster. But I would probably wait another, another week or so. Yeah. And it's too wet now to work in your garden anyway. It's going to be a cold week, too. Mm -hmm. All yes. right, John in Madison. Hi, John. Hi. Um, can you plant strawberries and tomatoes in the same bed? We've heard you shouldn't. If not, why not? I have not heard that, and I, I think that I have seen strawberries planted in proximity to tomatoes. Let me check and, and respond to that next Monday, because I don't know of a, of a situation that that's a problem. But you've got to pull the tomato plants out and the yes. strawberries stay in the ground. Strawberries stay in the ground, and so that, that could, I mean, obviously that would be an issue if you, if you want to cultivate everything. But I don't think that there's a disease that's transmitted. All right, we'll check back next week. Oh, okay, We lost good. line three. Let's go to Marilyn in Madison. Hi, Marilyn. Hi. Hi, what's your question? Um, last year we planted impatiens in our flower boxes in the backyard, mm -hmm. and they died like middle, middle of July. And I was wondering, did that affect the soil? or is there something we can put in that to fertilize, you know, regenerate the soil? Okay. And patients are having a real issue with a disease where it, it you have to sterilize. So the the, benefit, the good thing is that it's not in the ground. So if you get rid of all of that soil and then clean up your um, planters very thoroughly using something like either, probably bleach would be a very easy way for you to do it. Bleach those boxes, get rid of everything, and let it air dry, and then get fresh soil and we plant, you should be fine. And we don't expect a problem this year with the impatience? Are we just a one-year thing? Or? The, the, they're trying to be, greenhouses are trying to be very, very careful. If the plants themselves are clean, but if, if you've had issues in that soil, you should rotate to some other kind of uh, annual for a while, zinnias or marigolds or um, begonias, and just don't plant impatience there for a few years. Okay, Emory in Mazomani. Hi, what's your question? Hi, I have some uh, poison ivy vines in some trees, and I'm just wondering, how I should uh, handle those. I understand I shouldn't burn them. Yes. Um, I heard that they, the oil will remain in, even in the dead vine, so I'm just mm -hmm. wondering how I should handle that. Yes, if, uh, there are people that are they're very sensitive. If, if you burn those, that poison ivy vine, the, um, it will be released and people can actually get it in oh. their eyes, which can be terrible. So um, some people have just cut the um, actual stems that are growing up the trees and let it die in place and wait till it's dry and then pull it down. But then you have to dispose of that in probably, yeah, that's interesting. Where are you going to be able to put that at that? Because you're going to have to be careful with any of that material. All right. We are out of time. If you're on the line, stay there. Linda, we'll talk to you off the air. We'll see you next week. And we'll be right back with a final check of your forecast.